What's up guys, my name is Khan, and we're back today in Scrap Mechanic, and we're back with a concept that we had done a long time ago, but I feel like it needed some improvement, and it needed a few different changes, and that is, of course, the vehicle fuel system. So obviously, none of us really know if there is going to be fuel or not in the game. I really hope survival would have fuel, because that would just make a lot of sense to have to mine fuel and fill up your engines and stuff. But in the meantime, with the mod pack logic, I've gone back and fixed the old fuel system so before we did a fuel system that used controllers and uh, it just sort of moved a meter between two sensor points but the one problem I had with that is that you could actually fill up your car anywhere it was really just a button on the side of your car and when you'd press the button it would fill up the tank you can see there our tank actually filling up to 10,000 but with the mod pack number logic we've actually done something a little bit different here so now we have an entire fuel system with the tank and all that but now we're also measuring fuel consumption off the speed of a rotating object so for example this rotating tire here has a meter on it which measures how fast it rotates so we can actually take the fuel and have it scale up so it consumes more fuel the faster your vehicle rotates and then also we've got it fixed with a proximity detection system so you actually have to be within range of a tracker which allows you to set up fuel pumps around the map so you can't just fill up your car anywhere and it's really really cool how this all works so really simply uh, we've got a, a just a little modded seat here and you can see we've got our engine now our engine is actually hooked in through logic so that it shuts off with the fuel system but unlike the previous one this logic kind of works straight with you know the seat so if we hold w we go one way we hold s you go the other way and you can see the 10,000 there on the right side is actually going down. In front of us here, we can actually see our RPMs there on the left meter. And on the right meter, we've got our fuel gauge. So the XO meter in the mod pack gives you a bunch of different functions. But one of the functions is meter, which is this function. And really simply, you feed it a number between 0 and 100 and it outputs that number. So it's a percentage type thing. So we've got on the one side fuel as a percentage of the total tank and on the other side we've got RPMs as a percentage of the fastest speed which seems to be 4244 there. So a really really simple system and really easily we actually consume less fuel the slower we go. So you can see those brown AND gates there directly in front of us and if we just sort of tap the throttle it'll only activate one and then as we throttle up more and more and as that wheel spins faster and faster it'll go and consume more and more fuel up to five compared to the original one. So it's one times consumption versus five times consumption and uh, really simply we'll just drain the tank here at full speed and it should stop completely once it gets below zero there perfect negative 10 so now you can see even if we press w and s we can mash the keys and you can tell the fuel is actually off and it won't let us do anything this is really 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 cool really cool and the reason why it is is because now we can press this button and fill it back up now you're gonna say well con you just filled up the tank i don't understand but here's the cool part we're only able to fill up the tank because right now that tracker there is within 20 blocks of our little sensor setup. So if we go over here and we take this tracker and we delete it. So if we take a new tracker here and we put it one block away outside of the 20 block range. Now you can see if we hit the fuel button, we can't actually fill up the tank at all. So really simply, you can put trackers around the map as your fuel depots. And actually we've got a, just a really simple fuel pump over there. But you see we got trackers as fuel depots. And now, unlike the previous fuel car, if you want to do an actual like fuel-based race, you can totally do that with your friends. And you can take this fuel system, put it on a car, and of course race around a map and have different like checkpoints or pit stops. Really simply, all we're doing is we take the rotation speed, which is measured by rotation on this XO meter, and we feed it to an absolute value. So if it's going backwards or forwards, it doesn't matter. It just tells you the total speed. And then we just display that on a number here, which we really don't need this display, but it's just there for our own benefit. And then of course that compares to the five conditions here and these five conditions actually relay directly into these five logic gates which in turn subtracts from your total fuel number. So the five conditions are really simply uh, speed above zero, speed above 1000, speed above 2000, speed above 3000, and speed above 4000. You can see if we go max speed it's actually 4244 okay or 43 for some reason there it's yeah but anyways it's it's 2000 4200 so you can see the fuel consumption you can actually watch the sort of the gates move as oh we're out of fuel again okay can, can, okay can we just fill this please just move that a little bit closer there we go we'll just fill the tank all right perfect we can of course adjust the fill speed as well that's a really really fast fill speed we can change all that and we'll show how you do all that in a sec but really simply we've got those greater conditions so you can see as we rev up 
the uh, the conditions will kind of scale. And then they, of course, feed to this, which in turn goes to a counter block. So your fuel is actually stored in just a counter block, which goes up and down in whatever interval you want. And when you feed it a brown input, it counts down. And when you feed it a pink input, it counts up by 100. So that's why when we press this button, it'll count up a lot faster than it counts down. But regardless, the pink counts up and the brown counts down onto this white counter block. So that counter block really is our fuel tank. And then above it, we've just got a greater than and less than check. So if we're above the max fuel capacity, which in this system is 10,000, uh, and that one, it's a little bit more customizable. But if we're above the max fuel, it just stops us. And if we're below zero, it stops us on the other side. And of course, it shuts off the entire engine system. So really simple stuff. And then of course, we've just got, you know, the meter output and all that stuff. So really, really cool what we can do with the number logic. But of course, I figured this would be a little bit confusing and a little bit difficult to set up on a car. Obviously, this would take a little bit of space. So I decided to go and make it much, much more compact and much better. So this is the exact same system right here. This is the new Con Fuel System 2.0. We've got a little gas pump here as well. And of course, our gas pump, if we actually just lift this up, you'll see just has really simply an AI tracker underneath it in the middle. So you have to be within 30 blocks of the gas pump, but of course we can change that. So this is our fuel system circuit. Now you'll notice there's these extra sort of meters and buttons hanging off the side. Those can all be removed. They're just there sort of as a information system, just so you know when you're setting up the system. And uh, But you can remove them all, no problem, and delete them once you remove it and weld it to your vehicle, however you want to do it. So really simply, all the connections are at the top and at the bottom here. Everywhere where the caution block interferes with the circuit, that's where you got to hook this circuit into your system. Now, there are a few differences to this circuit compared to that one. Uh, it's much improved. For example, this right here is a 30 block measurement. So we can increase this, we can decrease this. This white one here, that determines how close your vehicle has to be to the fuel pump or to the, to the radar tracker in order for it to actually receive fuel. So if you have like a really, really big vehicle and you wanna make sure that you know your circuit can still receive fuel, you can increase this as much as you want, decrease this as much as you want. And it's of course, just the distance in blocks that you have to be close to that, um, that pump. And then of course, when we remove this entire caution block here, it doesn't affect the circuit. It stores the value in here. This is just a display. So you can actually just weld this five by seven circuit to your vehicle and you're good to go. The other bottom input here, this sort of yellow plus N gate, that's a number gate and it's actually just outputting the fuel value in the tank. So you can connect this into whatever display you want if you want a digital display. The analog display with the meter is at the top there, it comes out a different side. But if you want a digital display as well, you can just connect this bottom number in. But again, not required. If you don't have it connected to anything, the circuit will still work. So. Across the top, we've got all the main inputs that you'll need. Um, basically, you hook your seat into the green input, and then you also hook your engine coming out of the green input. So this, you can see seat goes into green, and then engine comes out of green. Then, of course, we've got the absolute blue input here. So this blue input feeds off your rotation meter. So you have to have an exo meter set on rotation on whatever you want to measure. You can measure a wheel which I've been doing, which is measuring the wheel speed. But you could also have like an actual engine set up with a little fan belt on it, and you could measure your engine rotation speed. However you want to do it, that is up to you, but you do need to measure rotation. So that feeds into this blue right here. Then the yellow and purple are your two meter outputs. So you can see they just both feed directly into these meters. And the meter, the yellow meter is your RPM, so the speed at which your wheel is rotating. And the purple meter is your fuel gauge total level. So you can see we're actually at full fuel there. But... Those meters, again, you don't have to hook them in, but uh, it's nice to have that display. I mean, you definitely want a fuel gauge hookup. But you can see really quickly as you ramp up, uh, the fuel gauge goes down relatively fast, actually extremely fast, and then the RPM, of course. But we can just refuel that really simply right here. We'll just press that, and boom, our fuel is back up. Now, there's two scaling functions here. We've got a pink scale, and we've got an orange scale. And uh, they can be adjusted, of course, here with the little displays. And these are really, really cool. The fuel you'll see here drains very, very quickly. And uh, as we rev up our RPMs, it'll drain extremely fast. And that was kind of a problem. So on the right side here, we've got our tank scaling factor. So we could take the tank, multiply it by two. Now our tank is twice as big. So instead of the capacity being 1,000, the capacity of our tank is now 2,000. And if we ramp this up, you'll see that it'll go boom, 2,000 is now our tank size. And we can keep scaling it up three, four, five, six, seven. You'll see the meter goes down as we increase that. So now our tank capacity would be a total of 8,000. You know, let's just bring that down to five, right? 
Of course, if we, let's say, fill it up past that point, like 3,800, and then we go down, you'll see the meter just kind of skips past zero. Once we get below 3,000, we won't be able to go back above it, but you could, you know, adjust this after you filled it. So really simply, that's just storing the value in this orange number. You can adjust that beforehand and again, delete it. So if you find the default value of 1,000 isn't a lot of fuel, which I agree it's not, it's a very, very short amount, you just scale this factor up. I find running this on times five with a 5,000 tank is pretty good for most vehicles. I think that one over there is a times five tank. And then the second number on the left, this pink number is actually your input adjustment. So you'll see this vehicle here, if we rev it up to full, can go to the full RPM range, 4,200. But sometimes you're gonna make a car that can't go that fast. For example, if we have a really slow engine on this, um, you can see our RPMs, that left meter, you know, it can only go up to a little below half. So it can't even get the full fuel consumption. So at a little below half, you'll see we've only got two of the five brown gates there, the, the greater than gates, those are your fuel consumption. So we're only ever consuming two out of five fuel. So if you have a slow vehicle like a rock crawler or something and you wanna make sure it consumes the full fuel amount, even when it's spinning at subpar speeds, you can actually adjust this first scaler. So this is a times two, times three, and really simply, this is scaling the input value. So now we've got it to times two, so it'll still output whatever RPMs we're actually at, but it's treating it as double that when it's doing the fuel calculations. So you can see we're actually up at four fuel consumption and not fully at that five fuel consumption with this slow thing. So we could increase this one more to times three. And there we go. Now we can increase this. Oh, we're out of, we're out of fuel. We're out. Okay, we'll just fill that back up. Now you'll notice the fuel consumption is uh, fed into this red gate here. It actually determines how fast you want the fuel to increase. So if you have it as an orange gate, it'll increase by one, which you can see on the meter is extremely slowly. Red is by tens, so it increases in intervals of 10. You can see it's a lot faster. Uh, purple or pink is hundreds. So you can see it just basically spikes it right away. Uh, thousands, ten thousands, so on and so forth. So you could actually have this adjust itself and increase as much as you want. I'm going to leave this at the default one and one setting with, uh, of course, this at 10. It increases it pretty quickly, but you could change that however you want. And now you can see we've actually got this at a times three, five times the tank. And now even at the slow rotation speed, we're not at full speed on the meter at all, but yet it's still consuming full fuel. So if you make a rock crawl, you can go up to times 10, times 20, times 100. You get a vehicle that crawls really, really, really slow and consumes a ton of fuel. So it's really however you want to do that. And then of course, you know, you can refuel it just really simply pressing that button, hook it into that red gate. We can refuel it. And if we take our fuel pump and we move it outside of the 30 block range, which we are now, I believe. Yeah, outside of the 30 block range. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's 30 blocks. We can try, you can see we can't actually fuel it. We've got a really basic vehicle set up here, which I think is just absolutely awesome. Really just to demonstrate how great this fuel system is. And so uh, here we've got our basic vehicle. I've got a nice little console there on the front. We've got a speed in the middle, which is really simply just an exo meter hooked into nothing, just displaying the speed of the vehicle. And then on the left, we've got the RPMs. And on the right, we've got the fuel gauge. We're measuring the fuel, I believe, off this back tire. Yeah, right here off this rotation. And of course, we've got this whole circuit set up here. Our scaling factors have already been set, and then I deleted all the caution blocks off the side. So I believe this is at a, a one size scaling factor in terms of consumption and a five times scaling factor in terms of the tank size. And you can see there, we've got our fuel button on the side of the engine hooked into that gate as well. So really, really cool stuff. And, uh, you know, it's really easy to hook up and really easy to set up. So we can just drive our car. And uh, you can see as we increase our meter, it actually will increase fuel consumption. Perfect. That's exactly what we wanted to do. And so you could do, you know, a whole fuel race type system. And the cool thing with the number logic too is putting your vehicle on the lift doesn't reset the logic. So for example, our fuel gauge is, you know, just a little bit above half right now. And if we put this on the lift and then we put it back down, you can see it hasn't reset the logic. Whereas if we were storing values with binary or with controller positions or rotations on bearings, whenever you'd put it on the lift, all the rotations on the bearings would get reset. So that's kind of a pain. But with this, if you're racing with your friends and, uh, you know, let's say you run out of fuel here. So this one's obviously five times the tank size. It's got a, a fair amount of capacity so it can drive for a fair amount of time. But uh, we could, of course, decrease that. But here we go. Let's say you're driving with your friends and uh, we run out of gas. There we go. So we're out of gas. We've got no, we've got no gas. We've got no WS. We can still turn. So the cool thing about this is now you have to actually put your vehicle on the lift and run it back to the gas station. You can't just like, I can't just put it on the lift, take it off the lift and press the button. It won't, it won't do anything. It still has no fuel. You can see we can hold this button all day. The fuel meter's not moving. Can't drive. So it's really, really awesome 
to have the ability to, you know, fuel at very specific spots. So now we got to bring it we're back at the fuel pump. And uh, we should be able to... There we go. Now we're close enough to the gas pump there. We can fill this up. No problem. And we're good to go. So that's just a really cool thing, which I think is the biggest improvement over the previous fuel mod. I mean, obviously being able to consume different amounts of fuel, depending on how fast you're going, is really, really cool. So if you drive slower, you know, you won't consume as much compared to if you're driving faster, which is kind of realistic to a real car. It's a little bit different. I mean, in a real car, it's based on engine speed. But the biggest improvement is the fact that you have to be close to these gas stations. And I think that's just absolutely awesome. To be able to put pumps around the map or however you want with these little trackers and just have it so that your vehicle has to be close enough to that to fill up is just really, really, really cool. Because before with the original logic on the fuel system, we couldn't do that. And it just wasn't as exciting. You could just get off your car, press the button, and it was like, whatever. Now you have to actually sort of like plan when you're going to stop and when you're going to drive. So that's a really, really cool system. And I'm really excited about it. So I will upload this to the workshop, this new fuel circuit, plus the gas pump attached to the side of it. Of course, you can just make your own gas pumps really simply with the tracker block. You can just place them on anything. It really doesn't matter. But before we go, I figure I'll show you guys how to set up a blank car here with the fuel system just to make your lives a little bit easier so first thing we'll do is we'll just remove this fuel meter we don't need the uh digital fuel meter we'll keep the block distance at 30 so that you know you have to be within 30 blocks for the fuel pump to take effect that's no problem uh the green and the blue will hook those up after the fact so we'll just remove that for now uh this yellow one is the rpm purple is the fuel we can remove both those and we'll leave the scaling factor We'll actually do this at, um, we'll do it at three times. We'll make this a slower vehicle than the previous one. And then we'll put the tank at, at five times the capacity like we had before. And we'll leave the red. I feel like red's going to be too slow there. When it's full, that logic gate will actually shut off. But red might be too much. We can always adjust that later though if we feel like it's too slow. But we can just disconnect all this now. And we'll just remove this whole panel. So here we go. We've got our circuit. We're just going to take this and we're going to weld it. Pretty much flat in the same spot as we had before perfect so the seat hooks into the green green hooks into the motor no problem our angle measurement on the wheel hooks into the blue no problem there uh yellow is rpm so we'll hook that up into the left meter purple is fuel so we'll hook that up with the right meter you can see we've got fuel full rpm i mean it's pretty easy you can check if you're you know if you've lit up your fuel thing all the way how it's working and then we'll hook our fuel button into the red and all our settings have already been saved, so we don't need to have any of those. All right, so we'll turn up our engine, have a nice slow moving vehicle here, and we've got a three times scaling factor. So if we can get this thing moving at one third, you know, total RPM, there we go. So that should be consuming the full fuel. Oh, we're consuming four out of five. You can see there, oh no, just on the fifth range. So that's pretty good for a vehicle like this. You can see we're not moving very quick, but we're still consuming a whole lot of fuel, which is great. You really want it to you know, have that realistic effect or whatever. So it doesn't really account for the weight of the vehicle per se on its own, but that's really what you can use that scaling factor and the tank size for. By playing with the scaling factor and the tank size, you can really have any sort of fuel consumption speed that you want. So of course, let me know what you guys think of this build in the comments down below. I really, really like this fuel stuff. I think it's a really cool feature to add. I'd love to put it in a few different rock collars and stuff and really have, you know, like, like different types of challenges. I mean, realistically, if you really want to do it properly, you should have, you know, a spinning wheel inside an engine compartment to kind of simulate the engine RPMs. But I think it's a really, really cool idea. And I think it's really cool that we can do sort of more realistic fuel systems with some of the mod pack logic. But of course, let me know what you think of this build in the comments down below and, you know, leave any suggestions for other kind of builds you'd like to see. I think this fuel system is really much improved over the previous one. And I really like the fact that taking your car on the lift doesn't just give you a full tank of gas anymore. So of course, let me know what you think in the comments down below. And while you're at it, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll see y'all next time.